Muammar Gaddafi says he's moved Americans in Libya to places that are likely targets for U.S. retaliation, while President Reagan schedules a meeting on Libya that could be decisive. NBC Nightly News, reported by Chris Wallace. Good evening. The tense showdown between the U.S. and Libya appears headed toward a climax tonight. President Reagan has called a meeting of his National Security Council tomorrow to discuss whether to retaliate for Libya's alleged role in a Berlin bombing. But Muammar Gaddafi may have already acted. He says he's moved foreign workers, including Americans, to army bases and oil fields the U.S. would be likely to hit. Meanwhile, a U.S. diplomat is trying to win Allied support for a U.S. military strike, and he is getting a cool response. We begin our coverage in Libya with correspondent Steve Delaney. The Libyans are concerned that their military bases may become targets for American airstrikes if there's another round of hostilities. So Colonel Gaddafi has told an American reporter that yesterday Libyan troops were withdrawn from those bases. The camps are now to be used as permanent housing for foreign oil field workers, including perhaps a thousand Americans. The idea is to discourage raids on those places by planes from the U.S. 6th Fleet. There is no on-site confirmation of the exchange story because foreign reporters here do not circulate without escort. Some Western diplomats posted to Tripoli have suggested that moving soldiers out of the bases and moving foreign workers in is not a practical idea. During the weekend, the Arab League issued a statement of solidarity with Libya, although the text of the statement does not require the Arab states to do anything. And the island of Malta, Libya's closest neighbor in the Mediterranean, is asking the UN Security Council for an emergency resolution banning the use of force in the central Mediterranean. It is that kind of diplomatic and political activity which is now at center stage here, although underlying it all is the knowledge that the Sixth Fleet is out at sea, somewhere beyond what Libya claims as its territorial waters. Steve Delaney, NBC News, Tripoli. Some Western businessmen in Libya confirmed tonight that they had been ordered to move their workers into Libyan military camps. The businessmen said they were stalling for time and that the workers had not yet been moved. Incidentally, Gaddafi got a show of support today from Syria, which said it will, quote, participate next to Libya against an American attack. But there was no explanation of how it would participate. The president meets with top advisors tomorrow amid signs he's very close to deciding what to do about Libya. And officials say he won't be frightened off by Gaddafi's statements about putting Americans in danger. Jimmy Gangel reports. Returning to the White House, the president would not comment on Libyan leader Gaddafi's latest announcement of moving foreigners onto oil fields and military bases. But appearing on a morning interview show, Deputy Secretary of State Whitehead dismissed the report. I don't think there's any truth to the story. It's just another one of his claims. And if the president is concerned, the White House made an effort to make Mr. Reagan look calm and casual as he welcomed Japanese Prime Minister Nakasone to Camp David in a golf cart. But behind the scenes, administration officials say the president is moving toward a decision about whether to make a retaliatory strike against Libya. And White House officials confirm the president will have a special national security meeting tomorrow to evaluate the situation. The State Department's top counterterrorism expert insists this is the president's style of decision making. There's a lot of talk about the president acting recklessly, and yet in cases like this, he generally acts in a very cautious manner. He wants to be sure that he's right before he makes any decisions. Today, the president conferred with Vice President George Bush and Secretary of State Schultz, both of whom are believed to favor a military strike. Noticeably absent from the Camp David meeting was Defense Secretary Weinberger, who was believed to oppose such action. The only word from the Pentagon today is that the two U.S. aircraft carriers, along with as many as 30 other U.S. warships, remain on alert in the Mediterranean. Senator Richard Lugar, who supports a military strike, has also been invited to the White House tomorrow to consult with the president. It does indicate the seriousness with which the president views all this. And if there is culpability, state terrorism by Libya, the president has indicated there are consequences to that. While White House officials stress that the president is being cautious, they say he is not backing off. Said one, we're still just waiting for a decision. Jamie Gangel, NBC News, the White House. Vernon Walters continued shuttling across Europe today, trying to win Allied backing for retaliation. But in Germany, the advice was stay away from a military confrontation with Libya. 
NBC's John Cochran on the Walters mission. Ambassador Walters had his first tough assignment at the home of H. Cole this morning, trying to persuade the West German Chancellor to support military action against Libya. On Friday, Chancellor Cole warned that an American attack could have unforeseen consequences. And as Ambassador Walters left West Germany today, Cole still seemed determined to send his own foreign minister to Washington on Tuesday to urge President Reagan not to attack Libya. Walter's next stop was Paris, where he hoped for better luck with the new French Prime Minister, Jacques Chirac, who wants France to get tougher with terrorists. But after the meeting, the Frenchman said nothing, and the American displayed one of the reasons that five American presidents have trusted him. He can talk in public without revealing anything. Discussed. They were basically subjects of common interest to France and the United States. Beyond that, I have nothing further that I can tell you now. Thank Walters you. will remain in Paris tomorrow morning to see President Mitterrand, who has so far remained silent on the Libyan-American confrontation. Then Walters travels to Italy for what could be a rough session with Prime Minister Bettino Craxi, who is firmly opposed to what he calls a military blitz against Libya. Worried Italians kept a close watch this weekend over ships of the American 6th Fleet, ships off the Sicilian coast which headed toward a rendezvous with U.S. aircraft carriers near Libya. Yesterday, Ambassador Walters was here at 10 Downing Street in London, trying to win Prime Minister Thatcher's approval to use bombers stationed in Britain. It has never been clear whether an American president can legally use these planes without British consent. But politically, it would be virtually unthinkable to ignore the British government's wishes. Tanker planes are already here, just in case the bombers go on a mission to Libya, requiring refueling in midair. Today, Mrs. Thatcher said nothing publicly and kept a safe distance from reporters' questions. Tonight, there is one report that Prime Minister Thatcher has already given her approval. But the consensus of other reports is that Mrs. Thatcher has not yet given her final answer, that she has only promised her support if President Reagan can justify an attack under international law. John Cochran, NBC News, London. And tomorrow, the foreign ministers of 12 European countries will hold an urgent meeting in the Netherlands to consider what position to take in the U.S.-Libya conflict. U.S. officials say evidence linking Libya to the West Berlin bombing is indisputable, but they have refused to say what that evidence is. Pentagon correspondent Jim Miklaszewski says the Reagan administration has a good reason for saying so little. It is protecting a spy. Today in West Berlin, the bombed-out disco and a flower cross stand as memorials to last week's terrorist attack that killed two people, including one American. The U.S. links Libya to the bombing, and now informed sources indicate that Libyan connection came from a spy, probably operating in Berlin. But U.S. officials now claim the full extent of that information may never be revealed. Last week, the intelligence community was reportedly outraged when U.S. Ambassador Richard Burt and NATO Commander Bernard Rogers claimed the U.S. had clear indications and indisputable evidence that Libya was behind the disco bombing. U.S. officials claimed the remarks could endanger their source. In an apparent attempt to cover the source, administration officials claimed their information had come from intercepted radio messages from Libya, which congratulated the Libyan embassy in East Berlin for a great success. But the value of that information remains in dispute. This may be connected with the West Berlin bombing, but uh, it's not proof. On NBC's Meet the Press, Vice President George Bush remained evasive about what the U.S. knows. In Washington, everybody says there is a very close link. Uh, we have the evidence. Nobody is willing to talk about it. You, how, well, how can you, you have You found another one that's not willing well, to. But Officials say even Ambassador Vernon Walters may not be able to reveal the missing Libyan link to allies in Europe. Intelligence experts contend all this secrecy is essential to protect their sources, but acknowledge it makes it all that much tougher to convince the allies to impose sanctions or back U.S. retaliation against Libya. Jim Miklaszewski, NBC News, the Pentagon.